Hey, what is going on, guys? Pansy here, the MMO guru at your service. We're going over Throne and Liberty's brand new gameplay trailer. So what we're going to do is first we're going to run through the whole thing and then we're going to go back and break it down. All right, Throne and Liberty is an up and coming MMORPG. A lot of people are going to say, hey, this is going to kill Black Desert Online. But hey, let's see what happens. Let's see how this game turns out. But as of right now, this is the official trailer and we're going to check it out. Here we go. All right, got some good graphics going on. Some good quality cutscene. And yeah, the cutscene quality and the graphics quality is definitely up there. It's it's absolutely modern. I mean, there's some older games like Black Desert Online. Those games were developed like very long time ago as of now. So these are much more up to date and much more modern. So I'm hoping that, you know, the quality as well as the optimization is there. So that's my big concern. Dude, that guy looked like the Lich King. I don't know about you. That looked like that Lich King right there. <laughs> So this looks like actual gameplay now. All right, not bad. Looks looks pretty good. More cutscene, I guess. That environment detail is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Look at all the environment detail, the shadows, the textures. They look really good. And of course, whenever we get graphics like this, the concern is always going to be <laughs> optimization. <laughs> Ooh, Guild Wars 2-esque storytelling right here. Okay. So now we have actual combat. It feels very static from just looking at it. I don't know. If this game's ever going to compete with Black Desert Online, it needs to be very fluid. Like, absolutely crazy. But it feels very static from what I'm seeing right here. Yo, druid much? <laughs> so it looks like there's like large scale world boss fights and stuff. I'm really worried about the optimization as well as the gameplay. Not bad, not bad. So we got like large scale PvP here. Coordinated PvP. Siege mechanics. From the looks of it, they're summoning their own uh, siege monsters or whatever. World boss over here. Wow. If this game is optimized and runs with a decent FPS, this would look absolutely amazing. Like, gorgeous. Castle siege or what? Okay, siege mechanics for sure right there. I wonder how that's going to play out. What I can tell is those walls were like, you know, destructible, but we'll have to see if it's actually the case or it's only like, you know, a certain item which does it or a certain monster. Interesting. It, it looks great, man. I mean, I do have some concerns. All right, let's break this down. I got a few things I want to talk about. Sorry I interrupted the video over there, but it, let, let's start this off. Let's mute this here. So starting off, we have, you know, first of all, you see NCSoft logo. So NCSoft has a history of making like very pay to win games and such. So we don't know exactly how it's going to play out in terms of the monetization for Throne and Liberty. Uh, some people point to Guild Wars 2 and say, look, they didn't make it a, a pay to win at all and yada, yada, yada. But I think uh, Guild Wars 2 is uh, 
pretty influenced by ArenaNet. So I don't think it's just a matter of NCSoft's choice over there because every other game you look at, they do have a cash shop. They do monetize pretty heavily. They absolutely dropped the ball and tarnished a great opportunity with Aeon Classic. I was there and I was there for the initial launch and the Western launch and stuff. The Korean servers were popping like maxed out eight of them uh, in the global and the Western launch. There were like about 50,000 people in queue, but within the first week, they lost a big chunk of them because of their monetization practice. And when everyone was up in arms and upset about it, they should have been like, OK, we're going to change this right away and we're going to do this, 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 and uh, it'll be good going forward. But no, instead, they said, no, everything is working as intended and completely dropped the ball. That could have been a popping game. And, you know, it comes down to their monetization and what they're going for, because that was just a copy and paste of the Korean version and thought, you know, the Western audience was going to be OK with it. So anyway, uh, my big concern is NCSoft. Ten years ago, if you told me uh, an N NCSoft game is coming out, I would have been like, damn, they're a really good company. Uh, I, I know it's going to be a good game. It's going to be run well. But, you know, look at this environment detail. Like, I think the graphics look absolutely amazing. Amazing. Sorry, I can't even talk right now. But the big concern is obviously going to be optimization. When you have large scale PvP and graphics of this quality, especially graphics which are going for, you know, realism, then you're going to have to either turn it way down and you're playing like on Nintendo 64 graphics or something, or you're going to be lagging like hell. Unfortunately, there's no way around it. Uh, it's just a case when you have an MMORPG and there's large scale PvP and content like that, it's going to lag. And that's just what the way these games are. Uh, it's unfortunate. I wish we could play at like max graphics and really good optimization and like these huge battles and stuff. But, you know, let's see how far it goes. Let's see if they do add optimization features, uh, especially like when you're in open world and everyone's like moving around real quick, firing off spells and there's particle effects going everywhere. It's going to be really important. They have some sort of optimization feature where we can turn down the graphics for large scale content and stuff. So we can at least perform well and, you know, have fun, even if we can't get the full experience and immersion of having such amazing graphics. So that is a really big concern for me, and I'm hoping they do have some sort of feature for that. Not everyone's going to be running on like 30, 90, 40, 90 graphic cards, right? So it is a big concern, and I don't know what to expect because this is NCSoft. <laughs> they don't have a huge track record of large scale PvP optimization guild wars 2 i credit that completely to arena net and they did uh, optimize it well enough that if you turn your graphics down you could do well in large-scale pvp but you know hopefully they do the same here right so we see here traversing the terrain you know hook shotting up those uh cliffs over here i think that's uh, that's pretty cool and i wonder if that's a class skill it looks like it's going to be a, it's either an item or a class skill but this guy is a ranger right so i don't know how the classes work on this in this game yet but you know these kind of things are pretty cool and they do add that um immersion effect because you're not just uh confined to a 2d plane but you're using the entire environment around you, getting on top, uh, raining down arrows and spells as casters love to do. <laughs> so let's see how that plays out. Let me know in chat what you guys think about uh, that kind of effects, because a lot of games, they're very linear. They're very much on one plane. Like if you look at um, New World, right? It's a good looking game and stuff, but for... The 3D effect of the game is only a matter of slopes or getting on top of a wall. It's not like Aeon where you're flying through the air and stuff. But, you know, at the same time, I think games really need to push the boundaries. And whenever you do start incorporating 3D environment and stuff into PvP, there's a lot of cheesy mechanics going on. Like in Black Desert Online, so many times you've found witches and wizards getting on the highest point possible, completely out of range from a lot of class and just raining down hell. So... The same thing here. It's going to be interesting if they do give us give us that complete freedom, which honestly, I want that freedom because people do some crazy stuff and it's very entertaining to watch and very fun to be a part of. But, you know, let's see what happens, because I don't know if that scene right here is only a limited uh, thing where only under certain conditions you can do that or what or is this going to be a free mobility sort of thing? 
Anyway, moving forward, we see the person is probably doing a quest here. Uh, environment looks absolutely gorgeous. And then they go into this cutscene of a story. I hope the story is good. I hope there is a story that we can follow and love because when there is a story involved in a game, it becomes memorable. Look at Final Fantasy XIV. I reminisce about uh, older expansions and I'm excited for new expansions all the time. And I actually, that's the one game I actually go and play the story. I don't do anything else. <laughs> I should go and uh, do like, you know, raids and stuff, but. You know, uh, I'm just completely pumped about the story. That's the only game. Every other game, I'm going like all in, like full in, just go PvP or raiding and progressing in gear. But for Final Fantasy XIV, that's one. That's the one game where the story is like the pinnacle for me, and it's just gorgeous. When a game executes a good story, it's amazing. Like I still remember the storylines of World of Warcraft and all the uh, OG characters and stuff. And it's that storyline that you follow throughout the years is what makes a game like you know, almost immortalized in your mind and it's something that you reminisce about for years to come and it does add longevity. So more companies should definitely, definitely invest in having good writers, uh, good storytelling, cutscenes, and all that immersion uh, and bringing a player into the world and want to be a part of it and understand it rather than just pointing them in the right direction and say, go kill that. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, it looks cool. It looks cool. These cutscenes, I like that artwork and stuff. So I don't know what's going on here, but this is some sort of, I don't know if he's doing a quest or something, but what I want to talk about in this scene is particularly the combat. You notice this character. They are standing very still. These uh, skills, they look like they are root motion where uh, they're not able to uh, move around while doing a lot of those skills. Maybe this guy. Let's, let's watch this one again uh, with the warrior right after this scene. So what you have is root motion means if you hit a skill, your character moves a certain amount of distance or it stands still, but you can't move freely while the character is using the skill. Then you have split body where the upper body is doing the skill animation and the lower body is being controlled by you. Like for example, for example, in World of Warcraft, um, you can be walking around in all sorts of directions, spamming your skills, except for certain skills like casting skills. For the most part, a melee class is going to be, you know, spamming all their skills freely and um, without any restriction unless they're casting something like hard casting. But in Black Desert Online, it's a very fluid game. It's a very highly mobile game, except whenever you hit a skill, it moves a certain amount of distance and there's no way to move while doing, doing that skill. You have to cancel it or wait till the cast is complete. But the thing in Black Desert is they have a really good system of flows. So one skill chains into another skill really well. And there's a lot of animation cancels and all sorts of things, which add fluidity to the game and makes it feel very fast paced despite being a root motion game. So I'm seeing a lot of root motion in these clips right here. I'm hoping that it is fluid. Like I hope it does feel fluid, but I'm seeing a lot of static gameplay. Maybe it's just for the video. Maybe it's just because these are like early level characters or something. And they're just showcasing some gameplay. But when I'm looking at like this world, uh, or this world boss or whatever this might be, I'm seeing a lot of players just stand still and uh, casting spells. I don't know if this was just done for the sake of the video or what was behind it. Are these actual beta testers or what's going on here? So I don't know. So I'm hoping that it is a fluid and mobile game. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Because it could be very well that they're just doing this for the sake of this uh, video and this trailer, but we don't know. What I'm seeing is a lot of static skills and, uh, you know, spells being used. So even in this large scale PvP, I, I feel like a lot of people are standing still and shooting. This feels like a, you know, a modern lineage sort of game, right? It, it doesn't feel like something that's coming out of Black Desert's playbook, but rather it's something taken after a lineage too, in a way, but I don't know. It's too early to tell. It's too early to tell. I'm just speculating. I can only hope for the best, right? But this looks cool. Those world bosses look cool. I love world boss content. And especially when like world bosses like drop sick loot and it's not, it's not just a loot pinata where it actually takes, takes effort to go kill them to like take control of them or take them from other players and only a certain group can get the loot or whatever. I really like when world bosses are like a big part of the game. In some games, like in Black Desert Online, those world bosses die in, uh, die in like a few seconds, a few minutes, like, and not in a few seconds, but they're just big loot pinatas, no risk. All it is is just go hit it, get the loot, and walk away. But in games like Guild Wars 2, they did really well. It, it took execution to kill 
uh, Tequatl the Sunless or whatever he was called, and things like that. I, I enjoy it when there is actual mechanics behind a world boss and breath to the level of content uh, that you're engaging in because if it's just a loot pinata, it gets boring pretty quick, but it's something you have to achieve, something difficult to do, and you have to work together to do it, and you have to fight off other players in the while doing it in PvP and stuff. It, it adds to it. There's old school games, like old school anime style MMORPGs I used to play where um, they were on a 24 hour cooldown and once it dies, they had to wait 24 hours before you could kill it again. And it had a chance of dropping the best weapons in the game. And there's no other way to get the weapons in the game. So it was always a huge fight over those bosses. And it, it, that was the competitive thing about that game. And something like that, I do enjoy when they're a big part of the game. So I'm hoping Throne Liberty does that because they're showcasing world bosses and stuff heavily in their trailers. So that's why I'm mentioning it. I'm mentioning it to that extent. Now, we also see a lot of Siege content here. I love large-scale content. The only issue is optimization. If I'm just a single um, unit in like a murder ball, it's not as fun. But I see a lot of people spread out and actually engaging. Like here, they're shooting spells off the wall. You know, if I'm an actual player there and I'm like pointing it at other players and, you know, trying to nuke them down and stuff, it feels good. But in like Guild Wars 2, I remember playing when you get real serious, it's, you're just a murder ball. <laughs> you're just on your ping. You're just on your commander and it's just a murder ball. So, you know, it is fun for, you know, depending on what class you play. But if you're like a caster or ranger, you like to be able to, you know, do your thing standing up top of a wall and shoot people down. But I don't know. It's too early to say this might just be staged for the sake of a trailer. But hopefully it it is fun. That's what I'm hoping for. Fun and enjoyable and memorable content but let's see let's see let's see this looks this looks great from the trailer perspective it looks amazing now <laughs> is it going to execute that way there's not enough information out there it's not enough gameplay out there for me to be able to judge that but overall i think this was a solid trailer it gave us a pretty good insight into throne and liberty i'm hoping they do execute the game well and i'm hoping that this does end up being a a notable game because the more variety we have and the more competition available in the gaming genre and the MMORPG market, uh, I think it overall improves all the games because they start competing against each other and forces them to develop really good games rather than just uh, making these into cash grabs, right? So, you know, it took Black Desert quite a few years to turn into a really solid game, but they worked at it constantly. They constantly did quality of life updates and pushed out content. While some, there is debate on if the content comes out quick enough and they're doing too many classes and stuff, it doesn't matter. Like At the end of the day, they're trying to make the game better. So it's not just the release where it matters, but you know, over time, a game can improve and do better. Like Look at New World, a more recent example. Their launch was terrible. It was riddled with so many bugs and issues, but now after a year, they slowly chipped away at it and they actually improved the game to a point where people can say, hey, this is a fun game. And you know, it's in, it's going in the right direction. So I want to see the same thing from here. Even if it doesn't come out as a banger right off the bat, I hope that they uh, do realize that it's not over right there and they do improve the game over the years to come. So anyway, guys, this is Throne and Liberty. My first uh, look at the trailer. Um, all I can say is we can hope for the best and just keep an eye on this and see how it plays out. If it does succeed, then hey, I'm happy. That's it for this video, guys. Take it easy, and I will catch you next time. Once again, this is Pansy. Check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy, and join me in my Discord if you ever want to chat about uh, any sort of MMORPGs and stuff. I play all sorts of MMOs. Just have me in there. I'm, uh, I'm pretty responsive there. So take it easy, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.